Hey everyone, and welcome back to our weekly story time. So we've talked about a lot of different topics this month, and we're gonna wrap up April with a really fun one. And we're gonna be talking about the deep sea today. And I know a lot of people love to talk about it because it's very mysterious. And some of the animals that live in the deepest parts of our ocean are so fascinating. So our story time today is obviously gonna be talking about the deep sea, a day in the deep. And then we have an activity following story time where um, it's a little arts and crafts activity for you guys to do at home. So we'll get started with our book. It's called A Day in the Deep, as I mentioned, by Kevin Kurtz and illustrated by Aaron Hunter. So we'll go ahead and get started. If you dive deep into the ocean, thousands of feet to the floor, you would encounter animals unlike any you have seen before. As you first dive into the ocean, the sun is still shining bright. Brown algae floats near the surface and makes its own food from the light. A few of the fronds of sargassum appear to have two bulging eyes. A fish with fins like the algae waits for prey in its natural disguise. Descending 500 feet deeper, you see sharks with bellies that glow who are schooling in the dimness. They are small and move rather slow. Suddenly, a marlin approaches, but that doesn't cause them fright. One cookie cutter attacks it and twists off a circular bite. One thousand feet below sea level, a fish with protruding jaws waits patiently in the darkness with teeth like raptor's claws. The viper fish flashes a light on a spine attached to its back to lure in fish and crustaceans. One approaches and it attacks. Descending 500 feet deeper, you barely see the sunlight, yet millions of tiny plankton hide in the depths until night. When the sun goes down in the evening, they rise to the surface to eat. The darkness provides them protection from predators they will likely meet. Two thousand feet below sea level, you notice a beam of blue. It looks like it shines from a flashlight, but a fish comes swimming through. The blue light helps the headlight fish to see food from far away. If a shrimp gets caught in the spotlight, it may become the fish's prey. Descending 500 feet deeper, there in the blackest of darks, a vampire squid turns inside out to hide from an oncoming shark. The frilled shark investigates closer by bumping the squid with its nose. The vampire squid makes its getaway by spraying out mucus that glows. <clears throat> 3,000 feet below sea level, a fish with binocular sight keeps staring straight up above it, though there's barely the faintest of light. The spook fish has long barrel eyes under skin that is totally clear. The eyes survey the darkness in hopes that some prey will appear. Descending 500 feet deeper, where algae is unable to grow, there always appears to be falling a shower of edible snow. Marine snow, a mix of bacteria, dead plankton, and poop by the ton allows some animals to feed in a place that cannot see the sun. Four thousand feet below sea level, a fish has been here a week, waiting for prey it can capture with a mouth like a pelican's beak. Pelican eels are not speedy, nor do they have much strength, but they can open their big mouths to swallow prey about their same length. Descending 500 feet deeper, a jelly may soon become prey, 
but before the atolla is eaten, it lights up like a fireworks display. The lights attract a large predator who responds to the jelly's alarm by eating the smaller predator, saving the atolla from harm. Five thousand feet below sea level, a fish who wants to ensure that prey soon will approach her uses a light on her head as a lure. The anglerfish does not hunt alone. Others are along for the ride. Bacteria that light her fishing lure and the males attached to her side. You have reached the ocean floor where most animals would not survive. The temperature is always near freezing. The pressure would crush them alive. Yet here at the barren bottom, an oasis of life, of life appears. A dead whale sank from the surface. Some animals will feed here for years. So a day in the deep, it does give that great um, highlight of what life at the bottom of the ocean looks like. And a lot of those animals that inhabit that area and how they look for their food, what kind of food they're looking for, those amazing adaptations they have. Some um, might not look that appealing, some might be glowing. So it's definitely um, no mystery that people love to talk about the deep ocean because of the awesome animals that do live there. So if you guys are interested, just continue watching this video and we'll do that arts and crafts activity and we hope to see you guys next week. Bye guys.